All right, guys, now the minute we begin to talk about ground fighting and ground control, we need to talk about pressure. How do I create pressure? How do I maximize my weight, communicate my mass, and best inhibit my subject on the ground? Now, if you've seen my Keiza Gatami downloads, you have seen a similar drill introduced there. I've likewise introduced this principle in some of my Belgian law enforcement seminars. But I'm going to start off with the basic drill here and show you some much more advanced ones that are absolutely essential. When we get into the stockade, at bare minimum, the first thing we need to do know is how we can communicate our pressure. For this drill, I'm going to be using a ball. Any kind of ball will do. In fact, you could use uh, a pillow, a rolled up blanket. You could double up a focus mitt or two on the ground, a soccer ball, a basketball. Medicine balls are great as well. In this particular case, I'm using a tire tread slam ball. So slam balls are, you know, as the name suggests, meant for slamming. What's nice about the, the slam ball is there's a little bit of grip on it. It's a little bit softer than the average medicine ball. They come in varied weights. This one's only four pounds, but the weight is usually from a sandbag inside. Right, so it's perfect for making your combat maracas should you be so inclined. Anything you want to use as a ground support, if you're feeling Shaolin, go ahead and use an American football. Put it point up, make it interesting. But this is the idea. Whatever object I have on the ground, I'm going to imagine there is a, an imaginary or invisible water line. For argument's sake, we'll say halfway through. The goal of my application of pressure is to practice maintaining that spinal integrity we spoke about earlier on. So I want to always have a full solid core. I never want to have an empty back or I'm just lax and over contracted and leaving my vertebrae to the whim of chance. So my tailbone's always going to be engaged. My abs are always going to be pulled into my spine. My shoulders are going to be set and strong and my neck is going to be free floating. I want to imagine getting the majority of my mass under that imaginary water line. So try to avoid having all of your hips up like this. Instead, I would like to drop them as low as possible. Now, when you're cultivating this, you can relax, go into a cobra stance. If I just relax flaccidly without any awareness of my, my lower back and my core, you'll see that the spine is very, very loose, very, very vulnerable to injury, and I'm not going to be able to really radiate and communicate the power from my trunk, from that spinal engine. So I want to curl the tailbone under, pull the glutes in, pull my abs in. And the minute I do that, I should feel power coming up to the shoulders. Strength in the shoulders. I should also feel that the ball goes in less to my body. We speak about this a lot in our work on inspiratory resistance. Resistance against the inhalation muscles that are responsible for helping us to inhale, particularly under the contractions of stress. When I have a ball against me pushing inward, and now I have to brace my body to resist that, but in that girdle of musculature, I still have to be able to breathe. So my internal muscles are breathing, trying to expand my body while the external coat is pulling in. And it's that that braced core that's going to give me power and dynamism. So from a respiratory perspective, this is extremely important. If it's too much at the beginning on the diaphragm, you can bring it up a little bit higher on the sternum where it's easier, but be careful. If the stomach's hanging down, don't just neglect it. you got to make sure you have that selective contraction. And if you can't take the ball weight on the stomach, you need to be working up to the point where you can take it. Now, having the majority of my body under the waterline is the first part, with the spinal engagement is the second. But after all that's done, make sure you're not resting on your knees. The minute my knees touch the ground, I deprive the subject of my full mass. So I should be floating, just like we said in our crossbody, with the majority of my mass below that water line, but nothing resting aside from my point of contact on the subject and my feet on the ground. And that can change right, from side position to flat out body position. My legs can be closed or they can be open, but I'm always practicing being engaged. And as you can hear from my voice, I'm maintaining constant breath flow in a braced core. Once that becomes comfortable, and I see that I'm not neglecting and abandoning my spine, then I need to develop the skill to modulate and selectively contract one arm while moving the rest of my body. As ridiculous as it might sound to a lot of you, Having the ability to keep contraction on the neck, whether it's in a stockade or in a choke or in an arm bar, while keeping contraction in my core and while moving is somewhat akin to this old drill, right? Patting the head and circling on the stomach. When we have, or inverse, right? When we have two motor movements, like walking and chewing gum, a lot of people break down. And what I see is a lot of people will try to get me in a stockade. They'll put tremendous pressure, tremendous crank. But then when they need to adjust, they'll shift their hips or move their feet, walk around a little bit. And in that instance, they will kind of hiccup and they will forget to keep the arm contracted. And that's exactly where you escape, right? You'll, you'll escape oftentimes between breaths when somebody resets because they selectively forget to contract that arm. 
So the next drill is designed to teach us to selectively contract. Ideally, two balls similarly shaped is the easiest way to do it. First thing I can do is I'm going to wrap around around. So there's different ways I can do it. I can wrap with my palm and my fingers, kind of focusing on rolling it into the body. I can work on peeling it back. Right? Those are slightly different motions. And I can work on rolling it in like a cross face where my radial bone, the thumb edge of my wrist, is going deeply in. And I'll usually play with all three, pulling in, pulling back, rolling in, rolling back, cutting in, back, and just straight to the body, right? So these are different variations. But I'm always modulating the grip and the direction of pressure. And when I have that kind of motion occurring, it's akin to a cross body, or when I go to the cross face, the stockade, when I pull, directing the person's head and arm, adding crank, motorbiking in some cases, and resetting. And I would like to be able to do that while maintaining core engagement. So I start off with that waterline drill that we did in the previous exercise. I acquire the head of my subject, and now I practice lifting. At any point, if it gets too much, I can put that down, and I can rest on that ball just like I would, right? So in, a, in an actual fight. So I'm teaching myself to maintain engagement and to maintain pressure while finding those openings for rest. And then I go back. So I'm going to acquire that, see that I can control it, spike it, squeeze with different aspects of my body, and at the same time, move, opening and closing my legs, akin to a Kezagatami, weight off the ground, all of my power, all of my mass, resting on the opponent. So it's a very, very simple drill. I can likewise work um, sort of modified planks, where I have both of the balls down side by side. I can start by having my arms like skis, finding my balance on them, and then I can look at adjusting the pressure, pulling them together, lifting from one or the other, and then exactly the same way. So you'll learn a lot about applying your mass and getting crank and control on your subject. So a very simple drill. I'm not going to belabor it and demo it for half an hour, uh, but I might, on a workout day, Perform this, you know, three to five minutes at minimum. On a good day, I might do 10 or 15, a longer portion. It's, uh, it's a more dynamic variation than a, a grappling dummy. It allows you to be cooler, more intense, to spike, to grind, to crank with full uh, impunity, you know, without hurting a partner. It's super simple. These slam balls cost about 14 bucks each. Two soccer balls will do it as well. Whatever it is you wish. But something as simple as a ball, having two in this case, can let you work all of your selective contraction to develop that muscle memory.